Hi all, my name is Gary and you're watching the Cutocopter Technical Workshop. And what we're going to do today is introduce you to the T10 radio control unit that is used in the Cutocopters and specifically for those using the Pixhawk Mini or the Pixhawk 4. So to begin with, you're going to get your remote and the first thing we will do is check that batteries are installed. This remote uses two lithium-ion 18560 batteries and they are the rechargeable version. What we will now do is show you everything on the remote that you will need to know regarding the switches. To start with, you will notice that you will get the device holder in your kit and this can be installed on the remote in this fashion. For now we'll leave it off so that we can see clearly what we are doing. If we look at the face of the remote we will see the middle button is the power button. The left button has an A on it that is for return to launch or let's say auto land. The B has a B button for bait drop. So obviously that's the most important thing about our fishing drone, the bait drop. And to power up, what we need to do is hold this button in until all four lights appear. You will notice that the remote is now beeping and that is a warning to tell us that the craft is not connected. At this point, we won't connect the craft whilst we are showing you how the remote works. The next important buttons and switches we will show you are here at the back of the remote. We have switch E, switch E which is this lever. That is the main switch that we are going to use on the drone and that is our flight mode switch. Then next to it we have dial C which you can then rotate with your finger. Dial C is reserved for a future function for instance like camera tilt. So right now not used. As we move over, we see the large USB port. This USB port is used for the cable that will plug into this remote and then will go to your device. And that cable is exclusively used for video streaming. In the package, you will also get another cable that can plug into the standard micro USB port. And that is to charge the two batteries that are installed. So through a normal 5 volt cell phone charger, we plug it into here and your batteries will be charging. You'll see a light illuminated on the front of the remote when it is charging. The final two switches and dials is switch F and dial D. Switch F will be used to save your favorite drop zone. As you fly, you can click it, it will save your drop zone. And dial D is then obviously to delete. D for delete. We scroll this up and down and that will delete the waypoints at the end of the day. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll quickly install the device holder and take the circular nut, press it over. And then we just screw the nut on the back tight enough so that things don't flop around. Just note we also have a screw here which is a three millimeter allen key screw. You can tighten that up to tilt up and down. Let's just keep it out of the way for now. I've turned the remote off now and we're now going to go into some detail of the various switches. When you are flying your craft the best place to have switch number E is all the way up. This flight mode is called loiter mode. The middle position is also a GPS flight mode. That means the craft will hover in one place and if there's wind it will lean over into the wind but it will essentially stay on one place. The third position all the way down is your auto mode. This auto mode is what you would use then once you've saved the waypoint. Um, we would then click into auto mode and the craft would fly to the saved waypoint.
Okay, to start with, we want to let you know that you really need to be safe. So get into an open park or a nice spot on the beach where there's nobody around you. Try and keep 50 meters space between people, property, buildings, etc. For the purposes of this video, we will leave the remote off. So let's power down by pushing the remote button in. There are two ways in which you can fly your Kutukopter. In really simple mode, or you can use it in technical mode with the aid of the phone app. Now it's not necessary to use the phone app. You can definitely use the remote in a very simple fashion without any extra technical information. And for the purposes of showing you that, we are now not going to use the phone on the remote. Right, so once your remote is on and your drone is on, to use simple mode, all you need to do is wait for the green light on the drone. That's really as simple as it is. Step one, turn on the remote. Step two, turn on the craft, in this case, our craft. And step three, wait for the green light. Once we have the green light, green is for go, we are now ready to fly. So once we've got that green light, we need to start the motors. Please make sure that there's nobody around you that can be injured. Make sure you stand at least five meters away from your drone and ensure there's no kids or dogs or anything that can blow into or over your drone from the weather conditions. If you are then happy that it is safe to fly, we can now start the motors. You'll notice that the left stick and the right stick are in the middle and that is the default hover position when you're actually flying. In, in other words, release the sticks, the craft will then just hover in one place without moving. So looking at the remote, we have our left and our right stick. The left stick is for launch and for land, and the right stick is for maneuvering the drone around. In order to start the motors, we need to take the left stick, hold it down, and push it firmly, very firmly, into the bottom right-hand corner. You'll notice the solid green light will illuminate on the drone. It was flashing, and then it will be solid. As soon as it's solid, release the sticks. At this point, our little drone will have its motor spinning, and we need to be sure that no one is in the area for our takeoff. In order to take off, all we do is the left stick, we now push forward, and the drone will lift off. As soon as we lift, let go of the stick, the drone will then hover. If we want to go higher, push more on the stick, it will then go higher. Obviously, the drone is limited to a certain altitude, at which point when you push the stick all the way up, it still will not exceed any further height. Make sure that you practice taking off and landing regularly. Below half, the drone will descend. When the feet touch the ground, hold the stick down. Make sure you hold it down until the motors stop. Our drone has a certain forward heading. And the way we change the heading, left and right, we use the left stick. Pushing left on the left stick will change the heading. Pushing right will change it in the opposite direction. In order for us to move forward and back, we use the right stick. Push forward on the right stick, the drone will move forward. Release, it will then hover again. Back on the right stick, the drone will reverse, release, and then it will hover. The final movement is called roll. Pushing left or right on this stick will roll the craft. So let's push left, it now rolls, and release. Push right, it now rolls and release. So we have now covered the four main flying functions of your fishing drone. Number one is power to launch and land. Number two is heading control, which is called yaw or the rudder or steering. Left on this stick, we'll turn it. Then we have the right stick forward and rear, so that's pitch forward and pitch backwards. And finally, we have roll control, roll left and roll right. I really hope that that's helped you understand how the drone will move around the air with the aid of your remote control unit. 
We'll now go into the next phase of showing you what the switches do, the flight modes, dropping the bait, auto land, etc. So a quick recap, push the middle button in to power on the, the remote. We're going to turn it off for our purposes, so we're just going to turn it off by holding it in. We've got A for auto land, we've got B for bait drop. On this end, we've got switch E, that's our main flying mode switch. We want to keep it in this up position, but just to let you know, middle is position hold and bottom is auto fly. We're going to keep it in the top called loiter. On this end of the remote, we've got switch F and dial D. Once we are flying, we're going to save a waypoint, put it back up there. And then at the end of the day, we will dial D, we'll then delete our waypoints. Let's get going with how to fly the drone. And to do that, we are going to use our little drone model. Okay, let's go fishing and let's learn how to fly our drone. In the earlier video, we learned that to start the motors, we push this into the bottom right hand corner and the drone will idle. To launch, we push this forward, the left stick, right, now we've launched. Let's make some space. And we're going to climb to our designated altitude. Let's get our heading correct. So we decide with the left stick, left or right, we'll change our heading. And we now decide we want to fly forward to the drop zone. Use the right stick to fly forward. There we go. And release to hover. If we want to go slightly right, push the right stick to the right and a little steady. There we go. At this point, obviously, now we want to drop the bait. B button will drop the bait. Our bait will drop. And you can either then reverse the drone by pulling the stick back towards you and then land it with the left stick. Or you can push the A button for auto, in which case the drone will rise to a designated altitude. It will then turn to face you. It will fly forward, hover. It will then turn again to in the direction you started and then it'll start its auto landing. As soon as it touches down, the motors will stop. At this point, I want to let you know about some safety options that you have when your drone is landing automatically. Please note that there may be instances where children or dogs or something has now occupied your landing zone. So if your drone is hovering and it is descending and you need to cancel this land all you need to do is apply pressure on the left stick, your launch button, the landing will then be cancelled. The other way you can do this is you can click your mode switch, that will also cancel the landing, or you can click the A button once and that will cancel the landing. So to recap, safety on landing, you can cancel by pushing launch, by moving the mode switch, or by clicking the A switch. Okay guys, we've come to the end of the small introduction to the T10 remote used with the Kuta Copters. And we hope that that has been a start for you to understand how the drone is going to behave in the air when you move the various dials, switches and sticks. In a later video, we'll show you some outdoor maneuvering of the drone Please stay tuned. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.